We farm mostly flat, poorly drained ground. Uh, none of it's tiled. So when we went no-till in the late 90s, we did so to try to address some of these uh, pools of water that would stay standing after a, a heavy rain. We had done some reading about how your disc is basically a compaction tool, so we thought let's just eliminate the tillage and see if no-till can help us with that water infiltration, which we, we did see an improvement with that, but it started to plateau. So we also started reading about cover crops, specifically cereal rye cover crop, and how its dense fibrous root system can help with that water infiltration. So since we did see that water infiltration plateau with no-till, we decided to tr see if we could to, to continue with that water infiltration using cereal rye cover crop. One of the best successes we've seen, and the most satisfying success, is when, <laughs> ironically, it's when planting is delayed and you have those heavy, heavy April and May rain showers. And to see that cereal rye up and growing and absorbing that energy from that storm really does give us peace of mind that our soil is protected. So that's been kind of an unexpected victory for us. Well, yeah, that's what's been fun about the journey with cover crops, right? Is, is when, when we started with it, it, again, it was just a simple, how do we cut down on erosion? You know, how do we keep the soil in the field? But once, once we started getting into it, then you start realizing all the other things that can come along with it. And, and what you quickly begin to realize is, well, yeah, the cover crop is helping hold the soil together so it won't erode. But all of a sudden, after a couple of years, you start saying, well, wait a minute, the soil texture is a little different and the water is actually running into the soil more than it did before. And so, you know, then, then you start down this rabbit hole where you start to understand how it's impacting soil structure and how it's impacting water infiltration rates and all these other things. Uh, you know, you start to begin to understand how it increases the water holding capacity of your soil. Um, and it, it, it's just cool, right? There's no other way to put it, but it's just, it's cool as you get into it and you begin to understand what the other benefits can be. One of the other examples I like to give is the spring of 2019. It was a really wet spring. I planted more crop in the dark than I did in the daylight that year for two reasons, partly because I couldn't see what kind of mess I was making behind me. And partly because the windows to plant were just so small that if you had the, capability to plant until three in the morning when the next rain shower came, you better just plant until three in the morning. And so that year in that spring with the rainfall that we had, there is no way we could have gone out, tilled a field, waited till it was dry enough, tilled the field, waited for it to dry back out after we tilled it and then go plant it. We didn't have the resources to do that. And so to go out in a field where the conditions are not ideal, to plant, but they're acceptable to plant. And go out and plant in a field where cover crop residue is holding your tractor and planter up, your soil structure is supporting the weight of that equipment and providing an environment that's adequate, acceptable to plant a seed into without sidewall compaction, without smearing, um, was another example of something that's really encouraging. And again, you're realizing the theoretical benef benefits of better soil health, improved soil structure and soil tilt, and living roots in the ground. Mm -hmm.